Hey guys, hope y'all are doing well. Um, welcome back to Dean Family Acres. And today we're gonna be working on finishing up that trellis that we didn't finish last year. So y'all follow along and we'll kind of show you some step-by-step -step ways that we've improved what we think is the best and easiest trellis system to do in your backyard vineyard. Follow along. Dean Family Acres. All right guys, so you can see the trellis post we've got here and then the other one back behind me. Whoop. And uh, what we're gonna do is last year we got these posts in and we actually ended up planting one vine on this row. It is a late fry. Um, we're going to be incorporating two more muscadines. We might get that in this video, we might not in this uh, row. Um, but what we're gonna do is basically uh, we're gonna put our wire and our gripples in and um, just kind of do a little bit of step-by-step -step for you guys. Hopefully you can learn just a little bit as we um, have throughout a couple years of us doing muscadines and uh, just looking forward to what we've got coming along. Um, hopefully you guys are out and about on the few days that it's not pouring rain and or um, freezing cold and just getting those things done and ready before uh, spring hits. So. Let's get started. All right guys, so last year we put these in right at five feet. Um, I think on this side, we're gonna check both posts and see if we have enough height. Um, but I think we're gonna try and go a little bit above five feet. If you just kind of measure it out and think about where those um, vines, or your cordons are gonna come and then you're gonna have the, the vines actually coming down. And uh, if you kind of just wanna think through that and where you're gonna be harvesting from, you don't wanna be leaning over, you don't wanna be reaching up. So just kind of think through that in regards to your height. Uh, I do believe if we have the height on these posts, we're going to put it just a little bit higher. So let's check that out. All right, guys. So we checked on that end. That post is a little bit lower than this. Um, post, uh, but I think maximum height we can do with still having a gap up here at the top is about five foot three. Again, not that much difference. I was hoping we might could do about five six, but I think even the three inches will make a little bit of difference in regards to that height. You really can't tell in regards to looking across. We're trying to make this as uniform as possible, but even with the spacing, we did 12 feet between this post or this row here and the row with the Ruby Crisp on it. Um, I think from here on out, we're going to do 10 feet. Again, depending on how much space you have available in your backyard or wherever you're putting these, um, we'll determine how many or where your row spacing wants to be. But also, most importantly, just what equipment you're going to be using around it. You can be bush hogging or you're going to be using your lawnmower, um, those kinds of things. You definitely don't want them so close that you can't get in between because you will have some shading uh, issues and that kind of thing. I would not personally go less than 8 feet unless you are going to super stay on top of them and prune them back etc and even that i just don't think it's a good idea because they will definitely start growing out so um, i would say between 8 and 12 is probably about right for most folks uh, again we started at 12 feet um, and then if we do add any more we're thinking about adding one more row this direction um, then we would probably do those at 10 feet spacing so now let's measure at our five foot three and we'll get our holes drilled I will say if you have a longer drill bit than normal, uh, I would encourage you to use that. Um, I've got one buried somewhere, but in my opinion, it's too big. It's kind of one of those auger bits that goes in. And um, I think this will be fine. This is what we used last time, I do believe. Um, if you want to fact check me, go check out the video here. The next thing you want to check is just making sure that you're lining up. Um, that you're not like you know putting it over here and then you your wire is going to kind of pull across you want it to be as straight as possible when it's coming in here so right there where that kind of split is is right at five foot three then we're going to just eyeball it and uh, try and get it making sure it's the right direction Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure where your hole is coming across here, you're going to come from this side and drill in, um, mainly because our drill bit just was not big enough or long enough. A 
looks pretty close again this isn't an exact science it ain't gonna hurt anything but just trying to get it as close as possible All right guys, now that we got the wire vise in, um, it lines up almost perfectly straight, close enough, and uh, we can see straight through the hole. Um, so that looks really, really good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the other side and do the exact same height. Um, and we're going to wait to put the wire in here until we get on that end for a couple of different reasons. Um, one of the main reasons is it's really, really wet today. And if we do end up needing to um, bring the tractor up here to be able to pull against um, then I don't want to do it on that end down there because that end it will be a little bit more soggy so anyway let's run to that side All right guys, so we got the holes in on both ends, the gripple, grapple, um, clamps, can't ever remember the name, vice, um, is in. Um, when I mean it's in, that means that you can still pull it out, but basically that it will sit flush. And you can also be able to see through the hole, uh, which is also important. Uh, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your wire Here. and I will say that you want to use nine gauge wire um, I'll tell you a general idea size that is but um, you can either order it online um, or I think there's also a deal where you can order it uh, and get it shipped to your house from Home Depot it's actually a little bit cheaper 170 foot roll I believe when I ordered it was 30 something uh, that was about a year and a little bit ago so it might be about 107 now um, because we know how everything else is going uh, but just know that this can be fairly affordable it's not overly difficult to do honestly the hardest part of doing all this is putting the post in and um, picking which variety of muscadines you want to put um, those are the two hardest things um, getting out here and putting you know drilling some holes into a post or, or or running your wire that kind of thing is not that difficult pulling the wire can be a little more difficult but you know if you get it set up you know come come get some younger person that's a neighbor of yours or whatever uh, to come come help you pull it tight and um, you can you can have it it's really not that overly difficult so um, we kind of switch gears here and get and get this wire in all right guys the other thing to remember about this wire is you want to try and get it as straight as possible when you're unrolling it um, you kind of saw me I think in a time lapse earlier be able to when I was unrolling it basically kind of want to walk with it and work it and uh, it gets pretty straight it's still gonna have a little curl to it but um, for the most part it's really not too bad you don't need your uh, gripple vice in there yet and you don't want to kink it so just feed it through your hole and once you get that fed through then you can very very carefully take your uh, gripple vice and insert it in I will say you want to be careful I had one that kind of caught a little funny on me last year and it ruined it basically these teeth that are inside of here those teeth in there that you can just barely see one of them got kinked uh, to the side and it would not work so you definitely want to be um, be careful with that all 
All right, as you can see, once you get that stuck through there, um, you wanna pull it and give yourself, I'd say at least about six inches. Um, you're gonna want more than that, but when you cut it on the other end, you're gonna have slack to be able to pull both bath and back and forth, um, unless you were Hulk Hogan or somebody super strong, Mike Tyson maybe, um, then there's no way you're gonna get this tight enough on that first cut uh, to be able to get this where you're gonna need a full foot on each end. Um, you just, there's gonna be enough slack there. So in regards to thinking about, hey, I need to run so many trellises at this many feet, not wanting to waste and have, you know, four feet hanging out on this end. You want enough, um, but you definitely don't need, you know, I'd say more than six inches at least on this first run. So you got that there. Pull that back and you got it in. Then we'll go to the other end. So, um, as y'all can hear in the background, my dogs are going absolutely nuts and that's because um, one of my neighbors um, up the road, their kids riding the bicycle down the road. Never a dull moment. Always, always something in regards to just going on on the farm and just around the neighborhood. So, um, again, just enjoy it. Uh, don't get aggravated by it. Hey, I'm trying to video. Eh, it's not that big a deal. The dogs won't hush. It's usually because there's something coming or going on or whatever. So we'll roll with it and um, hopefully it won't be too aggravating having to listen to a little bit of music or seeing me move around without talking. All right guys, so once you get um, the wire pulled up and it's as straight as you think it's gonna be, again, it's not gonna be perfect, um, then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab your bundle um, of wire and you wanna pull it and just make sure that you're gonna have plenty to be able to pull it through. Again, this is where you wanna make sure you've got enough. Um, you don't want it to be short or having to be fighting it to pull it through. So it's okay to use a little bit extra on this end, um, but on that other end when you first start, that's why you'll see in a minute, but that's why I specifically say, you know, you don't need a foot, two feet on that on the other end. Because when you start doing this, um, you're going to want that extra to be able to pull it, basically get it pulled up tight, especially depending on how long your trellis actually is. Uh, ours is a little over 60 feet. If it's much more than that, um, then you might need an extra set of hands to help pull it and not end up having to cut a ton of extra slack off. Um, but again, you want to rather be safe than sorry. You don't want to have to splice this stuff, although you can with a gripple tool. Um, but I don't have one of those, um, but that is a, a, an option that you can use. Um, you can also um, kind of tie them together, that kind of thing, but gripple tool is the way to do it if you do ever have to splice this stuff. So let's see if we can get this uh, adjusted. All right, as you can see, um, that was easy for me to pull. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see or not, but move it a little bit. You know, a solid foot on this end, and it's still drooping. It's still drooping by, I'm not even sure how much, but hopefully that makes sense for y'all. Um, I just wanna make sure that people don't cut it, ends up short, that's your worst nightmare, don't do that. So once you do that, just again remember, um, you wanna be careful not to mess up those teeth that are in there uh, and I will say if you have a really bad boogered up spot on this end um, you might want to clean it up just a little bit let's see if we can get it there look at that so now we got plenty pull it back not going anywhere so I can let that go and it will fall all the way back now you can see how much we have here But that gives us plenty on this side. We want at least a foot. So kind of pull it here. That is at least a foot. And um, let's go on down to this other side and we'll see exactly how much we have on that end. Tighten on that end. I just like to try and get it even on both sides or at least pretty close in case you ever do need to pull it. Now y'all can see what I'm talking about. If you've got an extra person, this can come in handy, but it's not required. All 
another helpful piece that I left on the other end down there is uh, if you got vice grips, clip it on the end and pull it. I might have to run and go get those. Okay, there we go. We're getting close now. Let me see if I can get a little bit tighter and then I think I probably can get it from the other side with the vice grips. Fairly certain that's all I'm gonna get with uh, it being um, by hand and not using those vice grips. So we'll go to the other end and tighten up a little bit. I could run down there and get those and come back, but I think we've got enough slack here. Um, got about nine inches to a foot, so that's plenty. And um, we'll need to be able to tighten it just a little bit more anyway. Um, we'll kind of let you, I'll flip this around and let y'all see exactly how tight it is. It's pretty good, but um, it's definitely not as tight as I'd like it. Put the vice grips on the end. You also can put it up near the... Another way to do it that I think is can be beneficial. Let me find a piece of wood and I'll show you how to do this. All right guys, so let me show you here. What you're gonna do is get your board so a two by four, put it like this, and you wanna grab your wire here. Just go down like that, just pull it. Okay. And that is pretty tight. Look at this wire now. Got a little wiggle to it, but not much at all. I think that'll do. All right, guys. So some of our regular viewers might recognize at least a portion of this pile. And, um... This is the last episode that we had from the $1,000 barn build and unloading this lumber and stuff, which is now covered with pine needles. That gives you a time frame, but we are looking for some of those right there. And um, we need them to be taller than um, I think five and a half foot is what the other ones are um, because we put this trellis at five foot three inches. And honestly, that... Uh, the ones we did on the other one were a little bit shorter. So make sure you get long enough T-post. Um, but we had to come over here and find these. We had one over there by the trellis that I had found that was taller. We're going to check these and see if they are or not. We might have to paint them just to make them look a little bit nicer um, than what they are now and maybe match the other ones. All right, guys. After you figure out um, your wire and you get all that set and it's at the right height, you've got a pretty decent tension on it. Again, it does not have to be perfect at this point. But once you get that set up, then you need to come back and you want to put your T-post in. Some folks go ahead and put their T-post in. I personally like to use the wire to help me kind of line up exactly where I need to do that. Um, if you've got even spacing with your muscadine plants, then that kind of gives you an idea of exactly where you need to put those T-posts. Um, some people do like to put them right next to the vine. That's totally fine if you want to do that. Um, what we're going to do, at least for now, is we're going to do like we did on the other side, and we're actually going to put a T-post at the end point for each variety. So that way you know where to prune. Um, and there's no over, overlapping once they run the distance. Um, ours are a little, little over um, 10 feet from each vine where it's planted to the T-post. And um, but the reason it's like that is because I paced off my trellis. And again, we ended up at, I think, 62, 63 feet versus 60 feet, which would have given 10 foot spacing um, in between the vine and the T-post on either side for a total of a 20 foot spacing. So we're basically at like 21 feet approximately. Um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, I will say, make sure you get a T-post that's long enough. Y'all saw us hunting for that over there by the under $1,000 barn build. If you hadn't watched that series, definitely check it out um, right here. Uh, we need to finish the under $1,000 barn build. Even though it's 
is anything really ever finished we need to wrap up a couple different things mainly at least one lean to off the side just so we can start parking some of our tractor equipment three-point hitch equipment etc in the dry instead of out in the weather so um, look for that coming up let's hope we get to do it before summertime because i really don't want to be doing that when it's blazing hot Got a feeling we're going to be fighting the dogs barking all day long, one thing or another. The joys of having farm dogs. Alright guys, so we got our wire up. We also got our two T-posts up. Honestly, I probably should have had a six and a half foot um, T-post. So those were six footers and I would not go any shorter. Um, and if you wanted your trellis at five and a half, or more um, you're definitely going to need a minimum of six and a half uh, i would probably go with seven footers in regards to t-post um, just being honest if you want it that high if you're just running it at five foot or under then probably a five and a half foot or a six foot t-post would work for you so just give you a little bit of a tip there um, in regards to making sure you can save a little bit not having to go back and forth to the store and after you've put it in the ground and add to your collection at your farm or backyard <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to walk down here and try and get this wire pulled back from the other post there. Uh, all amongst while the dogs are going absolutely nuts today. So um, let's see if we can get this stuff pulled and uh, get us a wire up so that we can then know exactly where we need to put our muscadines. Um, when we planted this late fry, we kind of eyeballed it. Sometimes that works, but that's also why I've got about 63 to 64 inch trellises and not 60 foot. So, um, you know, Try and decide where you want to eyeball it and where it doesn't really matter. All right, guys, test. Test one, two. Test one, two, three, four. Ooh. Hello there, people. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out either one of these. Um, this is our playlist on muscadines and hopefully that will get you some great information. And then this over here is our most recent upload. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys each have a wonderful and blessed day.